don't miss those two races. Could be two for the ages. That guy's going for gold in Paris. Coverage of the US Olympic trials continue tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock with gymnastics, followed by track and field at 8, 7 central. It's all part, of course, of making Team USA presented by Xfinity. Oh, the joy of knowing that you are going to your first Olympic Games on Freddie Crittenden's face. That guy, he wants to go for gold. On behalf of our entire crew, this is Lee Diffie saying good night from Eugene. We'll see you tomorrow. NBC4 News at 11 starts with breaking news. That breaking news is from Whittier, where a firefighter fell through the roof of a home. The fire started about 6.30 tonight, and you can see heavy smoke and flames coming from the house. At some point, a firefighter on the roof fell through. He was able to get out and walk away on his own. He was taken to the hospital as a precaution. We're told another firefighter had minor injuries as well. This fire was knocked down just before 10. Also breaking tonight, sheriff's deputies are investigating yet another shooting in Lancaster. This one only about a mile away from the two deadly shootings on Tuesday and Wednesday. They say a man was inside his car driving when he was shot on Avenue H near Challenger Way. He kept driving and flagged down firefighters for help. He is in the hospital. No word on his condition. And this is at least the fifth shooting in Lancaster this week. We reported on four others just within a few miles of each other. Those shootings left four dead. Now to the urgent search in Canoga Park for a man seen on video following and then trying to sexually assault a 24 year old woman. NBC 4's Darsha Phillips is in our newsroom now with the latest. Darsha. Yeah, Kathy, a pretty brazen and scary attack near a busy intersection in Canoga Park. Police asking for the public's help in identifying the man. He was captured on surveillance video. This footage captured near Roscoe Boulevard and Owens Mouth Avenue around 1030 Sunday night just before the attack. You can see the man appearing to follow the 24 year old victim. The video doesn't show him attack her, but according to police, the man tried to sexually assault the woman as she walked. The man was last seen running away eastbound on Roscoe Boulevard. Now, police released this composite sketch of the suspect. He's believed to be between 25 to 30 years old with black hair and brown eyes. He's about six feet tall and weighs 200 pounds. He was last seen wearing a red shirt, orange and blue long sleeved flannel and dark blue pants. If you recognize this man or have any information about the attack on Sunday, you are asked to call the Los Angeles Police Department. Live in the newsroom tonight, I'm Darsha Phillips, NBC4 News. Thank you, Darsha. Developing tonight, the U.S. Supreme Court weighs in on the homeless crisis across the country, allowing cities to enforce bans on people sleeping on public property. The 6-3 ruling met with mixed reaction today, and it comes as local officials announce that homeless numbers across L.A. have actually gone down. But what does the ruling mean for all those still living on the streets? NBC4's Ted Chin takes a look. Activist Mark Ryavik says the Supreme Court's decision is a victory for neighborhoods like Venice that have long struggled with the problems caused by homeless encampments. We're ecstatic that they rolled it back to what's being done in the other states. The court ruled sidewalk sleeping bans were not cruel and unusual punishment, paving the way for cities to more broadly enforce anti-camping laws. But L.A. Mayor Karen Bass was quick to criticize. This is a rehash of the 1990s. We just decided we were going to lock everybody up. Bass and officials with L.A.'s Homeless Services Authority say new numbers show L.A.'s gentler approach is working. Officials say unsheltered homelessness, people living on the streets, is down five percent in L.A. County and 10 percent in the city, while those who have found shelter have gone up 13 percent and 18 percent. The results of this year's homeless count strongly support our best practices approach. We believe in housing and services, not arrests. Ryavec says the numbers are small and insignificant. He's worried that if neighboring cities begin enforcing bans and Los Angeles does not, L.A.'s problem will get worse. And where are they going to go? They're going to go here because Mayor Bass isn't going to change her position. I am cautiously optimistic. L.A. City Council Member Tracy Park, who represents Venice, says she's introduced a motion to explore the impact of the court's decision, but acknowledges that as long as the city remains divided on what to do, very little may change. 
So this is an opportunity for us to course correct on some of the approaches that we've tried before. That is going to re